Sometimes when doing more complicated fusions, you might run into some errors where the meshes aren't fusing properly or there's gaps and holes or meshes disappearing. In most cases, you can actually fix this either by reordering the schematic or by moving the meshes slightly. I'm going to demonstrate both approaches. In this example, I've got two meshes fused together in a Boolean union, and then I've got two additional meshes subtracting from these meshes. Now I'm going to add a further mesh to this assembly, which is going to intersect with the two main meshes. So let me select this new mesh, and let's select the two base meshes, and I'm going to perform an intersection. So you can see that we've lost the thickness on the bottom mesh. There's some errors here. And the problem here is in fact that there are some coplanar polygons between the intersecting mesh and the base mesh, which is why we're getting these errors. So what I need to do is if I select the cutter mesh and I just run the scale tool, just scale it on the Z and X so out a bit, you can see that our thickness returns. So the problem we're having here is as soon as there's these intersection of polygons, we get the error but that's simply because I've laid out the geometry very poorly. And as soon as I reorder the geometry so that we don't have these coplanar faces, everything works as expected. So my advice is if you do run into errors when you're doing more complex fusions, it's always worth trying to scale or move your geometry just slightly, just in case you're running into errors that are easily solved with a simple transform. Another potential problem you might run into when doing really complex stacking of Boolean operations is that the automatic wiring of the schematic that goes on behind the scenes simply isn't adequate for the complexity of the mesh fusion that you're trying to create, in which case you're going to have to do a little bit of manual intervention in the schematic. So I've split my viewport and created a schematic at the bottom just so we can see what goes on as we add meshes to the mesh fusion. So I'm going to start by selecting this mesh and then selecting this mesh and we'll create a new fusion item. And you can see as I did that, it automatically created all these nodes in the schematic and wired everything up for us. And so as I keep adding to the fusion, mesh fusion in the background will keep rewiring the schematic view, adding the nodes and connecting everything up automatically. And you can actually create relatively complex mesh fusion setups with these automatic operations. You can keep adding stuff and it's pretty hard to make it break. So I can keep adding these subtractions and these should work. And as you can see, they have you hide source meshes. So you can see that so far everything is working pretty nicely. And in the schematic, we've got a relatively complex setup all wired up automatically behind the scenes by mesh fusion. But now I want to add this cutter mesh to intersect with the main mesh. You'll see when I add this, it's going to fail. So with the cutter mesh selected, I'm going to select my key base and I'm going to run an intersection operation. And you can see everything breaks. And that's simply because the automatic wiring, the schematic behind the scenes, can't cope with the complexity of the mesh that we're building up. And that's because it's trying to do all of the fusion operations at the same time. And in order to fix it, we need to impose a more logical order of operations on the process. So the first step is to grab this cutter and disconnect it from everything that it's currently connected to. And I'm going to move it to the other side of these nodes. And that's because I don't want the cutter operation to happen at the same time as all the previous ones. I want it to happen afterwards. So next I'll just move the final fusion item further to the right. And I'm just going to add a new fusion intersection into the schematic. And I'll rewire this node into my new intersection and pipe that into the final output. And now if I grab my intersection operation and connect that to the input, you should see everything works exactly as it should. So if you do encounter a mesh fusion failure when you're trying to do a really complex set of Boolean operations, it's always worth looking in the schematic just to see if you can reorder the order of operations into a more logical flow. But bear in mind that these kinds of errors are relatively rare and you shouldn't encounter them too often. It's only when you're trying to do really complex operations that you might run into this sort of problem. But most of the time, the automatic wiring of the schematic going on behind the scenes actually works very, very well.